So, okay, we're, we're Norfolk Growler Company, and we make um, beautiful, handmade, one of a kind um, growlers that um, uh, uh, um, that you will be using to to put your craft beer in here uh, here in Norfolk, and then uh, spreading out throughout Virginia and maybe even East Coast. Um, so uh, we're uh, that's our that's what we do. Um, in the background, you can see a few of our forms that are actually um, um, nearing completion. And um, so we thought we'd, we'd talk a, a little bit about um, about <laughs> vessels that have been used um, to to hold um, beer and wine uh, throughout history, and, and how we're sort of um, trying to incorporate the, the aesthetics of. of of what what's happened in history and, and how that's influenced us um, and brought us to where we are today. So I'm going to hand it over to uh, uh, my partner Rick Nickel. Rick uh, is a ceramicist um, and teaches at ODU. Um, so, right. so I um, Brandon did some of this research too, but um, some of the earliest vessels were made out of skins. But if you really think about um, what might have been <coughs> the earliest vessel. You can really uh, look no farther than your, your hands. If you really think about the first cup that was ever made to hold water, it's, it's this. Eventually, people got tired of doing that, of course, and progressed. So they started making skinned, um, skinned containers. So these are probably goat skin or some kind of animal. Some unfortunate animal was turned into a container for alcohol. And then eventually, people started to learn how to use ceramic material. Um, which is a whole other story we'll get into. But um, you know a little bit more about this piece right here, but this is one of the earliest forms that people have made that actually have traces of alcohol in them. Yeah, this, this, this was discovered, um, this dates from um, 9000 BC and was is one of the earliest known vessels uh, where they actually found DNA from beer yeast inside of this thing. So we know people put beer in this thing um, you know, in, in that that long ago, so it's just, you know, th th that's kind of interesting that we're still. Um, or we just nine thousand BCs in there. Nine, yeah, there's nine thousand <laughs> BCs, and we have a BC. <laughs> right, right. Right. Wanna, there's actually a, a theory in history that, that civilization sort of coalesced around production of alcohol, but that right. was that was one of the original sort of formative factors that, that brought societies together and caused people to start living in one place, growing crops. And doing this so that they could produce beer and booch. Right. right. <laughs> so it doesn't, we don't have any grander history that we can think of than, than 9000 BC that we're trying to um, work with. So. Um, th this might be a jug that you're more familiar with, uh, American style jug. And this, this is the classic form that we're actually working off of right now. And it's, it's a typical kind of cylindrical base, and it has a, a, like a dome top that comes to a spout, and then it has a handle, uh, almost like a loop handle. And if you're uh, familiar with how people actually drink out of these things, are you guys familiar with how people drink out of these? Right, yeah. You actually would hook it with your finger, one finger, and put it on your shoulder, then drink it this way. With your, so you'd lift your whole body and drink it with it. But that's what a traditional liquor jug for moonshine or uh, for alcohol of some kind was was actually used back then, and that model was designed for that purpose. Like one hand free for driving. Right. Yeah, you can drive. <laughs> yeah. And so there's there's been many kind of containers that hold the alcohol, and we've been looking at a lot of these uh, kind of old, even like aluminum beer cans that are just really kind of beautiful designs as far as graphic design, the, the, the design fits the form really well. And you'll see this kind of sloped, kind of, I call it, I call it oil can form in, in the work that we've been, uh, the, the growlers have been working on right now. And I've kind of settled on this form because I think it's a, kind of a beautiful form and, and really simple. It, this this might look familiar to the other form that that uh, we looked at earlier. The first um, it was a, more of a copper piece, but this is called a Bellarmine uh, jug from England, 
and these drugs came over during the colonial days and they influenced a, a lot of the uh, southern potters um, and what they were doing. And these typically have beards on them. They're also called Bartman drugs, and uh, Bartman means a bearded man, which is actually pretty typical of a, we call it hipster, you know, <laughs> nowadays. So we are actually working on um, a version of this right now too. It's, it's much harder for them to make though. And this is a traditional face drug. These come from South Carolina. They started in South Carolina, a traditional uh, folk art, and, and this this originated in America. And these were versions of those Bellarmine jugs that came from England. Um, so the, the artists that made these were looking at those and doing their own versions of these. And these were typically made to hold liquor too, obviously. They were made to scare children away from them. So, and, uh, so they're, they're really quite beautiful forms and, and rare and quite beautiful. And we've been exploring all different kinds of forms and the negative space around handles. And what we want to do is make this a beautiful piece to hold, to hold on to to be functional, but also beautiful at the same time. It's not easy to do. And we look to things that are commercially produced, like how much liquid can you put in a container and make it functional, but also make it very quite beautiful. Uh, shipping containers. Uh, we've been thinking of the whole idea of a container, uh, as a vessel, as a container. And we're actually coming up with, and we're designing a forms based on these containers in the future. We'll be working on growlers based on these containers themselves, which is a very interesting form. And then uh, the way I typically come up with ideas is I, I work out sketches in my sketchbook. And if you guys want to see my sketchbook tonight, I actually have it here. I'll pass it around if you want to look at it. I can't promise what's in it. But um, <laughs> I work out my ideas through sketches, then I transfer them to, to actual clay forms. And these are some of the forms we've been working on. You, you can see the, the oil can slope here um, and two different models and the handles and I'm, I'm placing them in two different areas to try to see what protects. And then this is the scoop neck that we're working on right now too. And I haven't gone to the bell mine forms just yet. So I, I have to stop Rick for just one quick second because if you know Rick um, and, and you know any of Rick's art, what, what really I think is exciting about what he's doing here with the growlers is this looks like a Rick Nickel piece, like he, and 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 you'll see um, very soon there's going to be a mural on Granby Street done by Rick. And when you see that mural, I want you to think about what our growler looks like and how the two of those kind of um, uh, obviously came from the same person. But I, I, that's that's we'll talk about Rick a little bit more in a minute. But I just I just think this looks very Rick, especially the handle. I don't know how you do that. Yeah, I, I try to get this the line quality from the drawing into the three dimensional form, which is really hard to do. And it's been one of the most stressful things about this job. Um, and this is where we're going with this. Um, this is a, a company that does this right now. What we're going to be doing is we're going to be making plaster molds from one original piece or two or three of them and then uh, mass producing them, slip casting them, which takes a lot of hand work. A bit about this. I, I'm DC Wilson. Uh, I'm uh, I'll signed up here with uh, Norfolk Growler because I think this is a really exciting idea, um, with, and it comes at a perfect time. Um, you can see from this map that there are how, what's the exact number? Did you have the number? Over 100 now. Over 100. People say over 100. I, over 100. I mean, you know, I think there's probably well over 100. This is I just think, in I Virginia. Think the number is 100 listed business license in the state of Virginia. For craft brewers. For craft brewers, right. For craft, here, yeah. here, here in Virginia. And we've got a little concentration down in our area. And obviously, people in the mountains like to make beer. So <laughs> you, you can see that. Um, mountain people. Mountain people, too. Mountain people like they, they are also the ones who drink it yeah, over there. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Uh, let's go next. Thanks. Um, and it's, it's an interesting time, again, because uh, this is a pretty recent phenomenon. That hundred happened just within the last 10 years, really, maybe, maybe 15. Um, you can see back in about 1979, uh, this is a count of number of breweries in the United States. Uh, we, back during um, you know, the late 1800s, we had over 2,000 craft breweries in the United States. That number 
was slowly declining through, you know, sort of combination of businesses and, and so on until prohibition, when it, of course, hit the bottom and got to zero for quite a while. Uh, and then jumped back up to about 703 after, what was it, uh, 1920, 19, 1936, whatever that was. Um, and then companies just kept getting acquired and consolidated and so on. And eventually we ended up with Miller and Budweiser and Coors. And, and that was about it. Uh, and, and, and that was really like the lowest point. I mean, both on this graph and, you know, aesthetically in the production of beer in the United States. And since that time, there's been this revolution and we're growing now at this crazy hockey stick rate uh, through the 90s. Um, and, and now we're back up over in 2000. We're at, we're at the highest number of individual breweries in the country ever. And so it's, it's an exciting time in, in the world of beer. And right here in Hampton Roads, there's a huge amount going on. We've got eight breweries currently right in, in Hampton Roads. You know, O'Connor, uh, Smart Mouth, Beach Brewery, Back Bay, Pleasure House Brewery, Young Veterans, St. George up on the peninsula. And then there's more coming. We've got Rip Rap Brewing, Coelacanth, Old Mariner Brewing, all happening right here in Norfolk. Uh, so that's 10 breweries right here in Norfolk. 10 breweries in Norfolk, where, what was it, five, six years ago, there was zero. So this is amazing. And the, now there's a secondary market growing up around breweries as well. There's there's uh, this this new, <laughs> we've got the representative right here, Lucian, the, uh, the, the, the secondary market of the growler shop or the bottle refill shop, where people will just go to find an array of taps, they bring in their own growler, they're gonna get uh, an amazing selection of beers and they're gonna fill it, put it in their growler and go home. Uh, so we want to be the next part of that secondary market of the, of the beer, the craft beer revolution. One thing I was going to say about that, if you're not a beer drinker and you're not in, into the, the brewery culture, uh, you, the, at every brewery there's a tasting room, right? And you can go into the tasting room and the best way to consume beer, if you, if you love beer, is to get your growler filled because it's fresh. It hasn't been in a bottle. If you want to take it home, it's the best way to take beer home is to put it in a growler. Most of the time, you have to buy a growler. You have to buy a $5 growler. You now he's got, we got five minutes. The, um, our growlers, not only are they going to be, um, we think, uh, uh, you know, more beautiful than any of the other options out there, but they're more insulative. Um, they're, um, they, they're going to last. They're, they're, it's like a, having an heirloom thing. When I think about the, the people that, that really get into craft beer, we like to buy, collect things. Like you like, you don't want to just have one glass, piece of glass that <coughs> looks like every other growl in the world. We want to have something because it's, it, there's a little bit of, you know, in a good way, there's a fetish around mm -hmm. what you're doing. You're, you're, you're enjoying all kinds of beers, you're recording it, you're, and you want to have something really beautiful to put it in. So um, if, you're, if, you, if you're not familiar with the culture, the reason this is so important is that um, every single one of these breweries we feel um, will want to also sell our our growlers with their name on them, um, and um, you can collect them all. You can collect them all. So, <laughs> and we wish we hope everybody. <laughs> okay, just so really quickly, um, so we have all these places where we want to um, have people take our growlers, and uh, but we also need to get our. By the way, hi, I'm Chris. Um, I'm married to that guy. Um, so uh, we, uh, um, so we, we need to get our uh, our name out, our product out. So the, we're just starting to think about our social media strategy. Obviously, we already have a Facebook um, page. Uh, we'll probably get into Instagram. We'll look at other things like Twitter and, and uh, kind of evaluate where we should go with that. Uh, I have a couple friends who are um, social media experts, so I'm I'm gonna. Um, pick their brains, um, but anything that we do, we want to try to make it Norfolk centric photos and posts. And um, I think they may talk about this briefly, but there's even um, talk about um, having um, decals or other things. What's that? Okay, fine. Anyway, he'll talk about that. But making things Norfolk centric, um, and, and then we'll have be able to try to um, subscribe to applicable groups and blogs and create a playbook and a calendar and really, you know, get organized so that we use social media um, as well as we can. Um, okay, this is my this is my secret weapon slide, right? If you if you've got a startup, um, you need to be able to answer this question, and and um, the question is, what is your secret weapon? What what makes you 
um, what poises you to be able to be successful over over the, the other person trying to do this? And this, I know we talked a lot about Rick. He's probably going to be embarrassed, but Rick is our secret weapon. Rick um, is on the uh, he's he's been on the cover of Studio Potter magazine, uh, um, one of the biggest uh, uh, um, pottery magazines in the country. Um, he is well right. He, he was he was recently given a kiln. Um, by a kiln manufacturer because he agreed to to give them some of his uh, or should make some art for him. So, um, I mean, that's, you know, it's, it's almost impossible to find um, somebody who, who, who knows how to do this, um, you know, who can do the logistics of it is like Rick can. And uh, he's wrapping me up. And, um, uh, you know, who is, who is an artist. So, Profus time. Brofist, okay. Brofist. So, Brofist, what we want from everybody is, is we want to know if you're with us. We want a Brofist. We want you to take a, a, a sticker um, and put it on your laptop or your car um, and tell people about it if you know anybody that, that you think would be interested. Um, help us spread the word. Give us a Brofist. <laughs> that's around, guys. Thank you very much. Is that, is that it I, I think that's it. Um, I, I'll mention very quickly another idea that we have. Can I mention the... the um, the color me trunk. Yeah. Um, you, know, you know about color me mine, um, where you can go and, and so we want to do a pop up, uh, something we might call color me drunk, and it's you, we're going to pop up in the breweries for an afternoon where you can in where you can go paint your own growler. We'll fire it for you and you can personalize it. So anyway, that's another little or, or use decals too. or decals. So questions? Yeah. Um, my question is uh, so with the Virginia ABC laws, was there anything where I thought maybe the growlers had to be like a standard size or shape or whatever. Do you have to clear anything or, or, or is it, does it matter? What we found so far is we need to put um, the government warning mm -hmm. and we're looking at the best way to do that, whether it's a stamp or a decal. That's okay. So that's it. Um, it's, um, so far, we, we'll, we'll need to, you know, check on that for sure. We're doing two sizes, 32 and 64. And the 32 will actually have a handle on it too, so you can just use it in Yes. Like a minimum quantity one million is the minimum order of an order <laughs> to get started. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, we, we, you know, I, I, I've done a little bit of preliminary, um, um, you know, math, and I, I mean, I think for us to have an actual company, and, and um, I think we're going to need to sell about three hundred of these a month to start out. You know, if we can't do that, we might want to pack it up. Here. Something else. Uh, so go ahead. So many, but um, I'll put up you afterwards. Uh, so branding, labeling of the growlers. Are you guys going to do anything like that? And then, if not, more specifically, how are you going to tackle that whole surgeon general's requirement? So in certain general thing, we're looking. We've, we've looked at a couple things. We just stamp each of them. just stamp into the clay prior to um, prior to that, and there's a, or you could create a decal. That's that's put on there and then fired into the. So again, it's, it's not removable. I, I want to ask you a question because, as someone considering a, a, a growler shop, what we thought well, we could put a sticker on, um, but the problem is, is if someone takes the sticker off and they bring it to a, a growler fill station, uh, you're not able to fill it, right? If I would it have a sticker. Happen. And so no, you have no, you'd no, have a sticker. You just slap, slap your sticker on. without fear. Well, that's, well, and that's what we were we thought thinking. about was giving uh, extra stickers to the growler shops. Uh, yeah. well, would you, you allow non-craft um, beer in the growlers? <laughs> Is there a rule? Well, I, Only we, Genesee uh, Cream Ale. Uh, uh, Genesee Cream. Genesee Cream. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> actually, actually, well, here's an idea. Like, there's, there's, there's so much more that, you know, ideas are dime a dozen, but here's an idea we had. Um, someone needs to make a Budweiser growler filling station and that you can you can go in you, you put the you, you know it would be a, there'd be a can that pops down fills with with fresh Budweiser and you take it home I bet someone can make a Miller's Mart on Hampton Boulevard uh, and Miller's Mart yeah, yeah, yeah Miller's like, Mart right Target everywhere bring I'm in not trying to hijack you guys please crowd but I've got to what's the price point <laughs> I know. Uh, <laughs> what, what were you considering? Well, we, yeah, obviously we, we need to discuss it, but I, but I, I can tell you that the, the the only other company that we know of making ceramic growlers in the U.S. right sells them for sixty dollars. 
Okay. Um, yeah, we, we um, yeah, I, I think there'll be, a, we'll have a range of prices. We're going to have, we're going to hopefully have some guest artists, uh, ceramicists that make probably higher end um, growlers. Um, we some of the different forms, more complex forms, maybe more. Um, and, and another thing we're thinking about doing too is I would love to really partner with ten, local tattoo artists that actually come up with designs that we can find growlers because um, they're they're really brilliant and, and I would really like to have that kind of partnership and get them known more. Vintage tattoo. You know, for your artwork, have you guys considered um, working doing three D modeling on the computer? I have, Something yes, about yeah, doing, I have a little bit, yeah. Because I mean, it, there's a lot of uh, a lot of technology there would work happy to work really well. Oh, yes. I, I don't really know how to do that as of yet, but I would love to learn how to do it. Seven by seven maker space right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We've got a couple members right here. Do you need wash them or dishwash? They're typically hand washed. So how do you wash the inside then? Because that was kind of my question I had with you. It's water and stuff. You know, have you ever if you ever get your growler filled, the first thing that the, that the person filling it does is they stick their nose to it and they're like and because growlers are kind of a little bit hard to get to get completely clean um i wash mine with i put soap and water and but i don't really even worry that much about it um but and if you do that in the brewery they'll, they'll usually put it on their squirter thing and squirt it out and i don't know you guys going to wash get those growlers for us if somebody brings in a dirty growler absolutely yeah but the key is teaching them to help after you finish your growler, it's still wet. All you have to do is rinse it out. Yeah, that's the right time to rinse it out. Yeah. Well, if you let it sit, more hygiene than the <laughs> it's like food on your plate. The longer yeah. it sits, the harder it is to get off. So. Well, that's good. You can help us make make. We'll probably want to do a hang tag. Yeah, so how do you that. how do you yeah, love your growler and take care of it? Yes. <laughs> that means it is here. Why they're uh, actually I, I could tell you exactly how heavy they are. They're four point five pounds. With, without the without the lid and five pounds exactly with the lid. Yeah, yeah, it's 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 actually it's, yeah, you just it's it's just right. Interesting. I would tell you if it wasn't it's just just right. Is that empty or full? Empty. That's empty. empty. Okay, because yeah. I'll say because that's like just above half the wheel down of milk or water. Right, it's, they're, they're, it's 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 nothing really. It's, it's yeah. How is it sealed? It, they, they have, um, what we're getting is, um, we, we actually will be purchasing commercial ceramic uh, flip top lids that, that, that have a rubber grommet and a seal and close off. Very much like you, uh, if you buy an expensive beer, when they have a, a metal, just like that. But they're wide, they're like about two inches wide. Yeah. Well, you have a company, um, Gizmo, that you put the growler in, it will actually pour the beer for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's not a bad idea. Yeah. There's a lot well, of that'll be the next startup. Yeah. <laughs> I like to say growler sling. You could just put it in a sling and just bike, bike around. You know? yeah. <laughs> I, think, I, I think I've seen it. Yeah. 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 Oh yeah. All right. Great job. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.